Live your life within the moment, moment And don't go wait until the morning, morning You never know when it is over, over All that I know is we'll get older, older So let us dance this night away But it doesn't matter Feel the earth and thin air Standing in a blurry dream No one else can see us Live your life within the moment, moment And don't go wait until the morning, morning You never know when it is over, over All that I know is we'll get older Let us dance this side away Good evening, good evening, and welcome to Be More Super Live. I'm your host, Brian Garner, joined by the hostess with the most as my co-host, Mr. Daniel Fudge. Hello, Daniel. How are you? How's it going? Yeah, yeah not so mate. bad, not so bad. <laughs> You've been away. You have been away to Menorca. I was expecting mm-hmm. this 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 sunburn, but you look all right, mate. Did you not go out in the sun, or was it just a case of all the bars and having a few drinks? I've got my uh, light turned up bright. That's what it is. Also, because I uh, over the years the uh, the the fags and the uh, the booze have taken their toll on my face. So what I have to do, I have to get this like green cream, this green moisturizer to try and offset the red. Or I'd be sat here looking like a tomato. I'm afraid. So um, yeah, went there, yeah. had a good time, put on two kilograms at the all inclusive. Did really well. <laughs> That's very precise. Two kilograms. Two kilograms. Yeah. It's like you've weighed yourself afterwards and said. I've had a good time. But do you know what? Um, I'm looking forward to tonight's uh, show. We're going to be joined uh, soon by our guest, which is Tasia Telles, who mm-hmm. is a wonderful actor. She's uh, been in so many shows like The 100. She played Echo. Uh, she's been in Supernatural. Uh, and currently she's uh, starring in Shawsy. Uh, so, uh, so we're going to talk about that very, very shortly. Um, but I wanted us to just talk about a, a film that I watched recently. Uh, which mm-hmm. I want to recommend to everyone to go out and watch. So I had a bit of a binge over the last few few days. I've seen the latest Mission Impossible. I've seen Gran mm-hmm. Turismo, uh, which actually I really, really enjoyed. But the one, the shining one that I really, really enjoyed was a film called No One Can Save You, um, which okay. is which is an awesome movie. Um, it's about aliens. Um, it's not the standard kind but it's been literally recommended by so many awesome directors and writers out there from Stephen King said it was one of the best movies he's seen um so I'm really really looking forward to that um so so yeah I mean I mean apart from going to Menorca have you seen any anything recently that you thought do you know what we need to recommend and we need to uh let everyone know 
I, I tell you what, right? So I'm a huge fan of the boys. I think it's one of the best things that anybody's put on on television in in a number of years. And um, this week, um, Gen V came out. Um, yeah. A uh, a um, you know a, a spin off about people uh, who've had the the uh, the Vort, uh, V injection as, as their kids, and you're like, oh right, this this could be really cool. And but if I'm if I'm truly honest, right, on one side you've got this ultra gory warts and all really creative, never seen before scenes that you get in in shows like The Boys and, and Gen V. But on the other hand, with this show specifically, they've kind of made it. Riverdale or Grain Jill a little bit and, and, well, and it just well, kind wait of a second. it is not Grain Jill there is a scene in there with a <laughs> shrinking woman and she's slapping something listen that would never appear in Grain Jill if it did it nope. would be like the most disturbing scene ever I just wanted to say a massive thank you to Julie Plews for the super chat uh, thank you so so much for uh, supporting the show um mm -hmm. i think i think we might have our guest very very soon um so before we do let me just get rid of this uh i'm doing like 20 things at once um but i wanted to uh quickly talk about this show here dan it's one of my favorite shows literally um i haven't got a clue about hockey I went to go and see hockey when I was a kid, the Nottingham Panthers against the Steelers. Um, I even went to go and see big hockey. Fixture, big fixture, that, I Brian. That's like, that, that's, there's a lot of blood in that one, pal. And I even went to go and see the uh, hockey in America. I went to watch the Washington Capitals against the Maple Leafs uh, mm -hmm. when I was about, oh, about 10 years ago. Uh, so this show literally is hilarious. So it's currently on Crave in, in Can Canada. They've just released uh, two episodes from season two um, and the six episodes to each season. Uh, you've got to go out and watch it uh, for all our Can Canadian viewers. And then obviously on Hulu uh, from the 27th of October, um, we have got the, uh, well, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be in the US. Um, so uh, our guest, uh, which I'm going to introduce very, very soon, but we're going to just get a snippet uh, and see her in action uh, for season two of Shawzy, if I press the right button. Zamboni. Call her in person. In person, tomorrow. Under no circumstances may you speak. We will do the talking. Fuck. I'm so sick of seeing those broads. Well, I hope Dennis is wearing something good. She's sexy. What? Hmm? Did he just say, Dennis, sexy? Fuck you, Shorzy. For what? We are looking at getting our captain suspended they for a record-breaking game, and all you can say is Dennis is sexy? I think all three of them are pretty sexy. Like, if we're getting it all out on the table. Who said we're getting it all out on the table? I've wailed on it to the thought of the three of them taking turns on me. Really? If I'm wailing on it and there's no internet or anything, yeah. Talk to me about Dennis. Well, like, I've never wanted a gal to rough me up or anything, but... But what? Well, I wouldn't mind if she did. Did what? Slap you around a little bit? Put me in a headlock. A headlock? Or a leg lock. What the fuck are you talking about, dude? I don't know, just however she'd want to fucking do it. However she'd want to fucking squeeze me between her legs, whatever. I don't fucking care. We'll pick you up tomorrow. Oh my god. Oh, so ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Tasha Telles. <sighs> Tasha. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Welcome to the show, my love. Honestly, this show is just crazy. It really, really is. Um, can you hear us okay? Uh, are we coming through I, loud and clear? I can. Can you hear me? Perfect. Uh, we can hear you perfect. But thank you so much for joining us on this live stream to talk uh, about season two of Shaw Shawzy. Um, I mean, if you could tell all the wonderful viewers uh, a bit about the show uh, and your character yeah. that you play on it. Well, the show is about basically an underdog hockey team from a small town in the no-show. Uh, the no-show being the North Ontario Senior Hockey Hockey Organization. So even that in itself is an example of a joke that's laced into the script, which is so funny. Um, the no-show league, you know, <laughs> that's how bad this this league is. These this team are is it's it's a beer league, and so they're fighting 
to win some games. And Nat, my character, inherited the game, uh, the team from her mother. And she really doesn't, you know, want to let the team down. She wants to bring the community together and get some wins. But Shorzy is a bit of a handful. And so the two of them are trying to figure it out together how to win some games. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, this show must have been absolutely crazy to work on. Uh, I mean, um, you know, this is quite a different role for you, looking back at your past work. So what is it about Nat and being on this show that you thought, I need this role? Oh, my God. I mean, first of all, just to work with Jared Kiso in itself is such an honour. His writing and his acting what he puts out there is unlike anything I've seen Mm -hmm. in television before. It's so original and so unique. I mean, it's a privilege to be a part of the cast. So I was thrilled right away, even though when he said to me, we're going to make a show, we're going to make the best hockey television or the best hockey show ever. And I was like, okay, I don't know even what that means yet. Cause you know, I've seen hockey. I'm Canadian, but I didn't know what that meant in the context of television, you know, and this show just takes on a life of its own. It is, it's more than hockey. It's cool. It's funny. It's, it's just a privilege to be there. I mean, this yeah. is what I mentioned a, mo- a, mo- a moment ago, you know, I've seen a few hockey games in my life, um, but I, I don't know much about hockey. Um, so, but this series, you don't need to know a lot about hockey because you don't see much of them playing hockey, to be fair. It's more about what happens in the locker rooms and what happens outside. Um, It's only six episodes per season. I mean, that's the only thing. I want more episodes. Why six? Do you know why they only chose six and not 25? (laughs) I'm not sure, to be honest. I think it's a format that they were familiar, that they were working with, you know, when they did Letter Kenny, their previous show. This show's a spinoff of, you know, Letter Kenny, which is hilarious and amazing and has a cult following and it's um, its own thing. But Shorzy takes on a different flavor. There's it's more plot driven. It's it has a little bit more of a grounded feel. So going back to your question about playing in comedy, it's you know, I work with a lot of different coaches and I'm reading about comedy and immersing myself in comedy in a way that I hadn't done previously. And what some of my coaches have said is, you know, comedy and drama can be the same. It just depends on the soundtrack that you're playing behind it and the, and the setups, you know, that live like, because the stakes are still the same, whether you're playing comedy or drama, you still really, your character still wants the thing that they want. Hmm. but, um, you know, how they get there and how they fumble is a little bit different. Um, but, yeah, it's a, it's a learning process for me. It's been really cool to enter into this space. I mean, how much of your knowledge of hockey did you have before starting this show? Was you a hockey fan or did you have to learn a lot before taking on the role? I mean, <laughs> like I said, I'm Canadian, so we grew up watching hockey. You know, a lot of our guys in school, they played hockey. Um, They were on teams and such. But I didn't know much about the culture of the space and the arena and, and really much more than just watching hockey on television as I would any other sport. But... So that's been uh, another piece of the journey that I've really leaned into is learning more about hockey. I mean, they have their own language. They have their own words for things. They have a totally unique culture that has been really fun to learn about. I mean, you talk about words. One of the things I was going to ask you was they're called sluts, which for me, (laughs) I've literally, I didn't, I was confused. I, I, I was thinking... A sluts the players or are they just insult salting them? I mean, do they actually call hockey players sluts? <laughs> I don't No, I don't think so. I think that was like a little uh sprinkle into the script for us that the girls who run the show that we call the hockey players sluts. You know, you don't you don't date sluts. <laughs> that's one of Nat's rules is you don't date the sluts because you know the hockey players no you just take them down 
<laughs> I mean, I mean the the show itself. I mean, is that a true reflection of what ice hockey is like in the AAA uh, in Canada, or is that how things actually happen? Because um, if it does, we need to go over there, Dan. We need to visit yeah. uh, because it yeah, sounds absolutely. like it's a lot of fun. Well, it sounds like you guys are about to plan a trip to Sudbury, Ontario, because that is actually what it is like in Canada. You know, I think Jared really wanted the show to feel authentic. So we have real hockey players on the show, players that played in all different leagues, including the NHL. Um, and they came, you know, they came onto the show and they bring that authenticity and they style the locker room the same way that they would do it in real life and they have that relationship in the locker room and on the ice that is really 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 sincere and authentic yeah so that's exactly what it's like <laughs> do you um do you feel like art imitates life at, at, at some point as you like so for example you, you know you know what blokes are like you know what men are like they they get together and just start being blokes and lads and then and then all of a sudden it's not acting anymore it's just blokes, you know, farting and burping and, and saying inappropriate things. Have you, you know, have you found it's descended into that while you've been filming? <laughs> Has it descended into that while we've been filming? I mean, yeah, I'm around a lot of guys now. You know, I, I'm, I'm Oh, so you're doing the farting and burping. <laughs> yes, exactly. So I've decided to join the, the party, you know? I'm like leading into it. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I feel... It's interesting being around all this male energy. It's really great. I grew up in a very female household, sisters, cousins, women. And so being in this space now is really interesting because it feels like I have a bunch of older brothers, you know, and they mm. tease differently and they we play differently and we hang out differently. So it's been cool. And I've got to say the great thing about this show is how fast paced vocally the script is. Um, you know, were there moments where you ab-libbed uh, because it is so fast-paced? I mean, was it all scripted or was there moments where you just went off the rails a bit? <laughs> um, I think it's a little bit of both, depending also on the character. I have a relationship to scripts where I really try to honour what's on the page. Um but we do, in little moments, add little things here and there. But for the most part, we just stick to the script because Jared does such a good job. He spends so much time creating the rhythm and the and, and, and the dialogue. I mean, there's so many jokes. There's so many jokes that are layered into it. I'm still sometimes discovering new ones <laughs> which is beautiful like there's a reference that I will have gone right over my head in previous viewings until I'll you know see a movie and be like oh that's where that's from but there's just so many of them that are woven in it's it's brilliant so I just stick to the script and I honor it yeah I, I mean the writing on it is 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 so well done because it's very hard for comedy to trans translate over to you know other you know, cultures and 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 and, and countries. Um, so the fact that literally, I, I I think I've watched season two, uh, season one now three times uh, because you're right. Every time you watch it, literally, you 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 find something new, that another line, another joke that you didn't get the first first time time round. Um, I mean, how on earth did you keep composed? Because you're quite serious <laughs> in in quite a lot a lot a lot of the scenes, and rightly so. You're trying to manage these group of hooligans um you know to try and get bums on seats so how did you keep composed during these scenes and not just break out laughing well we did break out laughing <laughs> <laughs> we did we you know we did break out laughing or sometimes you know it's you just you just have to learn how to compose yourself and just keep it going um i also stole a trick from Hannah Waddingham from her, I heard her talk about being on Ted Lasso and staring at um, earlobes. So mm -hmm. I will like sometimes when I, cause I can't like when it's getting, when we really need to get the shot and I'm, I keep breaking, I can't, I, I can't make eye contact. <laughs> I have to <laughs> cheat a little bit and just, and just try for this one last take to look 
like to someone's earlobe because it's so funny and so grounded. Yeah. That's, like a, that yeah, that's an Mark. interesting point uh, that you that yeah. you brought up, Hannah Waddingham. Sorry to interrupt, Tasha, my apologies. But that, you know, that, that's an interesting point you brought up about Hannah Waddingham because this this is obviously going to draw some parallels with with Ted Lasso and the, and the type of show that it is. And you're playing essentially the Hannah Waddingham character, right? So here is this this big, powerful female who's taken over this sports team. I mean, you must look at that and think, well, you know, our, our show's got more jokes. Ours is funnier, right? You must do that, right? Our show. <laughs> I I think our show is one of the best shows that is on television right now. I think it's a really special show. So, and I think it's I think it has the ability because it's a smaller Canadian show to push the boundaries with the joke telling in a way that a show on a bigger network might not be able to. Mm. So there's some real risky jokes on our show, and I find that really important and really cool i know i think it i think it makes our show unique um Mm -hmm. to to what else is out there it's another one of those things yeah I mean, I've got to say as well that that um, I, I I heard a rumor, and I don't know if it's true, uh, that Jared that plays Shaw, Shawzy, he had his tooth surgically removed for the role. Is that true? Because I read it in 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 an article, and I don't know if that's just you know fabrication. Did you see the show? Did yeah. you notice that when he smiles really really big, there's no yeah he got his tooth removed. Wow. Yes. You want to talk about commitment to authenticity? Right there is one of those examples. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. And and you say that that it's one of the best shows on t- TV, and I completely agree. Even Rotten Tomatoes is a hundred percent on rot- Rotten Tomatoes, which is awesome. Um, which it just shows that obviously uh, you know how how good the cast and the writing and ev- and everything like that is. Um, I mean, this is going to be a tough quest question to answer because I'm sure that y- you know the whole show was memorable to work on. But is there a favourite moment that you've had so far that you can share with us about uh, you know your time on set filming? I mean, <laughs> one of them has yet to come up in this season in season two that's about to air so i will refrain from that one but i will say that (laughs) the scene with mark michaels the goalie that nat and mark michaels had when she went to go pick him up and convince him to come back to the team that scene was so funny to film ryan mcdonald did such an incredible job that was one of those moments where I was just like using every ounce of willpower to not just burst out laughing in every two seconds. Cause you guys remember the scene, right? Yes. You know the scene yes. Ever yes. <laughs> yeah. He's got rid of everything because of his, I think ex-girlfriend and, and, and everything. Yeah. <laughs> he lost everything to his ex-girlfriend who took him for a ride and he's sitting there in his underwear on a mattress on the floor. And he, you know, goes to his trophies and he's stroking like these trophies, but he does this like, he does, he lowers himself with like a squat, like before, like he just, his whole (laughs) performance, his physical language, it was so funny. Um, So there was that moment, that was really fun to shoot. And then there was um, Shorzy and Nat, the way we finished the first season, we had a really um, beautiful, still connected moment between Jersey and Nat when they decided to go for it and keep the team going and go after um, the cup and winning the league and I just found that a really beautiful moment between the characters because that's when a contract is made and they have decided they're going to trust each other and they're going to try to do this together. It's just a great relate. Sorry, go on. They're gone. I was going to say, do you feel that that comedy shows need that every now and again they need that moment to try and draw it back somewhat just just a little bit of grounding just half a second where you go oh wow these are real people doing real people things because for example you've got you ted lasso does it 
does it very well. In fact, there's there's more of that in there than I'd like, if I'm honest. You know what I mean? But but like if you look at shows like Always Sunny, they're very few and mm-hmm. far between. I think you know there's a moment where Max character does a dance to 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 come out as gay, or or there's one where Charlie Day does a real powerful speech talking to his his estranged father, and and I feel like you need those in a in a comedy show to really ground it, and they must be. You know, because the jokes are so thick and fast and they're constantly coming, you, you need one of those moments to have a breath. And I, and I, I suppose to some extent, they're probably one of the better scenes to film, right? It's something new for the yeah. period of shooting. Well, all of the different scenes have different energies that they're serving, right? So it's like kind of noise to signal and you want to have a balance between like what the message is and what we're talking about in those grounded moments and then otherwise there's all of this movement and 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 pace and great music and you know the way that the cameras are moving and the the fights and all of that all of the movement requires stillness to keep it balanced to keep you know to keep to just keep the balance and the flow for sure. And comedy itself, I think serves a really important function for us. So I do think that reminding people that, you know, behind the comedy is real story. We have to laugh at the things that can be otherwise deeply upsetting. (laughs) You know, (laughs) we use that, we use it to survive. And and so, um, yeah, I love that it stays grounded in those moments. I mean, we've already had two episodes that dropped and obviously they're coming out every fri- Friday on Crave. What have we got to look forward to for the rest of the season without you spoiling anything? It's probably going to be really hard, but if you could do your best. Well, we see that the boys have some distractions. We see that there's some some girls in the mix. <laughs> and I was always wondering if Nat was ever going to have a love interest. And so we see the suggestion or we see something happening there. So that is really cool uh, for Nat is, you know, Nat has a little flirtation happening. Um, is it with so one of the sluts? Would you man to know if it's with one of the sluts <gasps> that you're having a flirtation with? with How dare you? <laughs> Stay tuned here, kids. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> oh. Do you know what? Do you know what? I hope it's not Shawzy because I want Shawzy to get with that reporter. Uh, because I know that is such yeah. the sweetest thing ever to see. Uh, you know the way he speaks to her, and and you know. So if if there's anyone out there that needs any help with with finding a loved one, take some 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 notes out of Shawzy's. Um, you know. You know, you know examples uh, because Playbook, he does it so yeah. well. He really, really ill. Isn't does. those? Those are some of my favorite scenes. I actually just watched that episode again last night, and every time it comes with a with a friend, and every time that scene comes up, I'm like, like this is my favorite scene because just the way he communicates to her is so sincere and vulnerable, and yet still cool. You know, it's still <laughs> cool. He has the final final word on that. He said, oh God, at the end, he finishes with, quote me. And then he yeah. takes a little sip of his cup, you know, because <laughs> he's speaking to his reporter love interest. Yeah. Well, well, Tasha, don't go anywhere. We're just going to do a message from our sponsors. And then we've got a few more questions before we bid our farewells. So here's a video from our sponsors.
So that is a video from our sponsors from the 9th to the uh, 12th of November. You're laughing now because you know what's coming, don't don't you, Dan? I know what's um, coming. I'm very so obviously, excited. So obviously, PropStore.com sponsors the show. So if you need to uh, find a perfect gift for a loved one or for yourself and you fancy getting a screen-used piece of movie memorabilia, so that could be something that's being used on screen in your favourite TV or movie. Uh, go on to PropStore.com. Uh, we're going down in a few weeks to get our hands on on such things as Marlon Brando's jacket from The Godfather, C-3PO's head from Star Wars, to to uh, Chris Evans' uh, Captain America <laughs> screen used. Uh, yeah, exactly. We're going to do a photo shoot, Dan. So if All anyone wants to take advantage of our special code that we've got, you can get 10%. What's the, the code, Brian? Do the code. Do the code, Brian. How do we get stop a discount it. of 10%, Brian? Right. Do the code. Right, you can get – stop it, Dan. Stop it, Dan. Right, so <laughs> if, if you want to get 10% off the buy now section of propstore.com, the code is – are you ready, Dan? I'm always ready. It's Brian Come 10. <laughs> <laughs> Not be more super 10. No, it's Brian 10. It's it's hard to forget. Brian is one of those names that, that you usually name a pet, you know, like a dog. But Brian 10 is my name. Not Brian 10. That's just weird. It's Brian Garner. But but Brian 10 is the code. So go on to propstore.com. Uh, and in a couple of weeks, you can see me and Dan messing about with some very expensive props. So the C3PO head is estimated to fetch 500 to a million. 500,000. Can we get 10% off that? No, because that's in the auction, Dan. Nah, it's boo, only the buy now section. Boo, boo uh, but Brian let's, go, <laughs> let's go back to our awesome guest. Uh, thank you so much for appearing with us and not disappearing, thinking, what are these that's guys it, talking it, about? That's it. Listen, I was just, you know, right, so, you know, that popular program from about 10, 15, I've just realised how many years ago it was now, that, that program that kids watch, Ben 10, right? I reckon... Brian could do his own spin-off, similar to, you know, the, the one that you're in now, or, or like Frasier, right? And, and he could be like his, his middle-aged dad. Do you know what I mean? Like talking about how to bleed radiators and change it, you know, <laughs> changing the oil filter on a 1997 Toyota Celica. You know, something like that. That's got legs on it, right? You know better than I do. I, I think I, you're onto something there, yeah. I, I was I actually am... thinking that the whole time I was watching you guys. I was like... Do you know what? I am, I am rubbish at DIY. Just ask the wife. Literally, I'd rather pay someone to come in and 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 do it. You know, I put a shelf up, and I I, I think I've saved a life. Do you know what I mean? I walk off like <laughs> proud with my chest out, going, "Look at me, I'm a man." Do you know what I mean? Um, so I wanted to just ask about your social media because mm. you've got quite a few followers. You've got eight hundred and thirty-seven thousand followers alone on Instagram. So how has your approach to your social media? changed over your career <laughs> that's a really really funny question because i think that is a evolving um process you know i i think at the beginning i was just like really open really artistic i didn't really think too much about things i just posted things if i liked the framing of an image and you know it felt like a bit like making a scrapbook um, so there was things without m much meaning that I would put up, but I, to me, it kind of felt like art. But now when I post, I try to keep it a little bit more <laughs> thoughtful and meaningful and professional. <laughs> and it's less of kind of like a developing art project and it's more specific. Um, but I like to interact with people on there. Like I want to talk to people, you know, I like engaging with, uh, the people who follow me and hear what they have to say. I mean, I mean, how much pressure do you feel? Because, you know, when you post something or you say something, your 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 voice technically is so loud because it's reaching so many pe pe people. So, do you ever worry about what you post? Um, you know, opposed to just like doing your scrapbook. Oh, all the time. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if we're gonna be real, all the time. I am. I am. You know, I try <laughs> to be very thoughtful with how I do things, but you also don't want to lose sincerity or authenticity. You know, you don't want it to be so polished that it is unrelatable or means nothing, but you know, sometimes you just want to do a little post and you, 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 you know, <laughs> so it, it can't always be so serious or oh, like life and work should be fun. You know, there should be times to be serious and times to be fun. And social media is interesting because 
it was a part of the job I didn't anticipate having to do, <laughs> you know, but it's evolved to being a job or a, a, a outlet or, you know, a part of the job in and of itself. Yeah. Do you not find it really weird when you, you know, like when you're scrolling or are, are you on, are you just, just Instagram or you're on Twitter as well or X? I'm on X. <laughs> I'm on X. I'm on X. I, I, I don't know. Since it changed names, it's, it feels different. Mm. I'm not on it as much. It um, but well, that's, that's cause it's Elon more. ruined it. Didn't he? Yeah, I, I mean, it, 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 it's good for talking. It's good for putting a message out there. And just what you were saying there about, you know, seeing it as an art project. And I find I find Twitter like a social experiment. There's some there's some wonderfully funny stuff on there, like really there's nobody funnier than the general public when they really want to be. But X in general is an absolute toilet, whereas Instagram is is a little bit different. It's a, it's a tad more polished and it's a tad more polite. But have you ever had your, cause this is, cause I've got a bit of a Twitter following from another podcast that I do. So there's, and it's a lot about uh, UK soccer and, and the football team that I follow. And I found it really weird that somebody had edited my head onto something. You know, it happens all the time. I, I've, I've got my head on but, various but people. But that's my fault, Dan, that someone uh, yeah, edited yeah. your head. <laughs> yeah. that, that's your fault were you the you were, you were the, the no the creative no force what it was that? what it was there's a show called warrior nun that's got a massive following and it's got a massive following around the world and and dan hadn't watched the show so i told the fandom that he hasn't watched it so literally they bombarded him with tweets or x's or whatever you want to call it yeah. <laughs> now it's so confusing um every single day and 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 someone had made a video of dan took his face and put it on a a, a video um and it and it was hilarious and it was it, it was perfection and this is you know which is great about the fans and, and what i wanted to ask obviously the fans are very very important to you because you you go to quite a few conventions as well uh, mm -hmm. which is really nice mm -hmm. to see and I attend as press quite quite a few of them, but I've always wondered, from a guest point of view, what's the worst thing and the best thing about going to conventions and appearing at them? Well, the worst, yeah, the worst thing would be that I never feel like I have enough time, you know. And we're flying mm. in usually, you know, from some place or another, so you, you, staying present and awake and and dealing with the jet lag when you're traveling across the Atlantic quite a bit is, you know, it wears you down a bit, but I get so much joy and have so much fun when I'm there and get to see and experience the excitement and the stories and, you know, the, the, the things that they make, they make art and, and books and stuff like that. And it, it's so meaningful. It's beautiful to know that the show or the character that you've worked on, has touched them in this way. Um, I, I love it. I love it so much. I mean, you, you, you start as Echo in the 100 that has got a massive following as well, enormous. I mean, what's been the most memorable interaction that you've had at a convention? Because, you know, I see it all from people giving guests teddy bears to, to, to other gifts. I mean, what's been the most memorable that you can remember um, of meeting a fan? Oh man, I mean, there's so many different versions of it. I mean, sometimes these conventions we can get pretty wild. Like, of uh, one fan, like we ended up exchanging clothes. So we, I gave her like I have like a thing where I love kimonos. Okay, so I love kimonos, and she gave me her shirt and I gave her my kimono, and she ran around and was, we started this whole kind of clothing exchange at the convention. So. It brought like the fans together because everybody was kind of wearing each other's clothes. Is is that and something that happens started. regular now? Is that is that like a thing you've started now? Ask, asking for a friend. Yeah, selfie yeah, yeah. or I clothes mean, swap. It, it, <laughs> yeah, right. Would you like my shoe? Um, shoes, she, yeah, shoes also me. available and shoes. on the table. Yes. But... <laughs> um, I, and she she knitted me. Uh, a purple kimono, which I have here, which is really cool. Um, but that was, yeah, those are the, some of the fun games that we get to play when we, 
when we're there. Do you find do you find that like these? I remember Michael J. Fox said it on uh, at the, the Comic Con over here a few years ago. Um, he said that it, it, it's odd because people know your work better than you do. Like it, it, it's really odd they know <laughs> uh, plot points or script points that you probably had no idea of because obviously you're shooting it and you're, and you're in that headspace and you're in that zone. And you get people repeating lines back to you that you can't remember you even said or did. Oh, yeah. I mean, sometimes, <laughs> I mean, because, you know, it's like I, I'm not still watching, you know, the hundred all the time. I mm -hmm. only on Fridays and Saturdays. No, but I'm not, I don't want, I don't. So the scripts aren't living in me in the same way that they were when we were filming, but someone might have just watched it. And so they'll, you know, correct you if you can't remember mis mistakenly, you know, made a bad reference to the show or remind you of things and you'll be like, hmm, of course. Yep, totally remember that moment. <laughs> you know? But as as I'm sure you've heard when we've Oh oh oh, oh there we go. Maybe. Hello. Oh she's back. Yep. Surprise. You're back. <laughs> yeah, it's long days. There's a lot happening on set. Um, so to retain everything is difficult for sure. Um, I wanted to ask as well that that you know, looking you looking at your IMDb is so impressive. You've done so many projects. Have you kept any mementos, any like prop pieces, costumes? That what that, did you steal, Tasia? Yeah. What have you stolen? What have you stolen? And yeah. and can we buy it? <laughs> buy it. <laughs> <laughs> no, swap can it. Swap it, Dan. It? Swap it, Dan, for your T-shirt. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yes, I'll do a trade. We can barter. <laughs> now we're there done. There we go. Um, I have taken tiny little mementos that no one would ever realize is gone, for sure. <laughs> um, but She's looking I around have the room. A painting of. <laughs> yeah. What's in the background? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like. I got some of my couch. I have a few lamps. Uh, no, I have uh, I have Echo's jacket. I have uh, a painting of one of my colleagues, Richard Harmon. It's this very like stoic painting because he, he his character became a god. So I saw it on the wall and I was just like, I need that because that's <laughs> hilarious. So <laughs> I have his face on the wall. Um, and then, I mean, I think like otherwise it's like a little tiny. I think I stole like a salt and pepper shaker from Supernatural <laughs> and I don't know, just other weird little hobnobs. <laughs> just I have a sword. Do you yeah. know what? A sword. <laughs> a sword. <laughs> So from yeah. salt, salt, yeah. salt and pepper to a sword. Um, I mean, I, I'll tell you, I, I, I'll tell you what, Brian, I've just, I've just realized something actually now. So for, for, for you guys listening at home, normally we, we get the guest on early. We have a bit of a sound check with them, things like that. I've just realized now that Tas Tasha came, she came, she came in raw. She came in hardcore. And fortunately, mm -hmm. we had no issues. What she was doing was ha checking her background for all the things that she's robbed. She's moving swords. <laughs> she's moving salt and pepper shakers. That's Props. that's what she was. She was just, that, I, yeah. If you zoom out, it's just did stuff that. That you've done. <laughs> yeah. that's you know, what i'm looking at <laughs> oh dear <laughs> i think on i think pepper shakers yeah i i was just about to say i i, I think on this software that i'm using i can pan the camera around no i can't <laughs> just oh, yeah. in case um but no i i i had a guest guest on a while back anna hopkins and she was in like the expanse and 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 bad blood and everything like that. She was she was marvelous. She's just fantastic. Um, and she mentioned that the end of the shows that they give you an opportunity to actually buy a lot of the designer clothes, like for like really cheap. Um, do you, do you, do you get a chance to do 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 that as well? First of all, I know Hannah since col at Anna since college, and I love her. And I'm so excited that you guys spoke with her. She's such a doll. Um, and second of all, we, yeah, they give you an opportunity to do, buy some of the clothes from, or depending on the show and depending on the season, like on the hundred, when we finished the hundred, it was COVID. And so a lot of 
they didn't have anywhere to bring the the items, the props or the whatnot. So um, me and a colleague were invited to take some things, and we did. <laughs> you backed up the truck, you opened it up, and you just loaded it all in there. Um, which is currently going to be in the next prop store auction. Uh, it's yes, <laughs> it's going to be yes. the Tasha Teller's <laughs> collection of, of yeah, props yes. from, from the 100. Um, I mean, you've played <laughs> so many characters, but is there a dream role that you're striving to play? Is there like a, a, a dream sort of genre that you've always wanted to do? Because you've done near enough, I would say, all of them near enough. Yeah, I mean, I I haven't, well, I really would like to do, I love these kind of epic dramas like Game of Thrones or like The Hundred, you know, like when they gave me a sword and I got a ride in on a horse, I just felt so cool. I was like, this is the best. Granted, I was covered with blood and it was raining outside and it was, <laughs> and I was like, I'm, it doesn't feel it doesn't feel often or sometimes quite as as majestic as when you actually see it on the screen but i mean you get to do all of these really unworldly things and i find that about science fiction really enticing um mm. and of course you know the superhero world like in the marvel universe i would love to live in that world as well i love comedy shorzy has just really got me like excited about working more in the comedy space so um yeah just keep on doing what i'm doing i feel like i'm i'm so grateful to be on such amazing projects that i just want to keep on going would you action. would you ever want to do something like you know like one of those british period dramas like downton abbey or something like you know just a guy who walks in and, you know just you just come sashaying in in all your finery and go there's a lady at the door and then and then leave and that'd be it. How was your British accent? Could you pull that off? Uh, my British, I don't know. Now I, my British, <laughs> it depends if you want to do British RP. I can't do, I can't, I had, I That is really good. Mimic, that was good. Mimic. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I learned that when they say pretty, they don't say why, they say pretty. It's pretty, pretty. Or, or like there's oh. these little things that I learned when I was studying um, British RP, but then there's of course different styles of british accents oh yes there is don't, uh... <laughs> yeah so so for so for example you've got the one that's a favorite internet meme right now where it's the cockney accent and people keep saying a bottle of water and and they think it's hilarious and really original <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, 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 really uh, original. So there's no tease. yeah there's no tease in it but then where brian and i are from at the uh at the uh, at the northern part of England, there's a few words that give us away so obviously you know and and this is going to shock you this is our posh accents that we're putting on uh, for this for this show, oh, oh bye. Gonna get... <laughs> I, I was I was boring everybody. Um, but yeah, I was, I was just saying that the um, the British accents that we do, Brian, we have yeah. a we have a number of words that give us away, and so for me, it's make, break, and take. So uh, for for where I'm from, it's make, break, and tech, and uh, yeah, <laughs> and bath and grass and dance, Brian. Yeah, yes, bath grass. But I don't think I've got an accent to be honest. But yet, when I go over to the States, um, I, for some reason, I sound like Hugh Grant. And I don't know why. Uh, you, you, you sort of, they say, say cheer, cheer, cheerio. And you say cheerio. But, but Dan, you're nor more northern. You're like 20 miles above me. So, you know, that's where the, the cavemen live. So... Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a lot of uh, Viking influence where we're from, Tasia. So you know what I mean. There's a lot of guttural, <laughs> guttural, awful noises that just come out. Like, like if 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 I go, if there's somebody that comes in and they're they're speaking like you say British RP, and they're just like, yeah, I'm going to the shop. Would anybody like anything? Uh, whereas whereas up north we'll go, go in shop. Do you want talk? Uh, which isn't even words. <laughs> the only one you can pick up in there is shop. <laughs> And you have to listen carefully. <laughs> but then, yeah, you then, really got to pay attention. But then, saying that, the Canadian accent in Shawsy, I think, is is beautiful. I love the Canadian accents. I really, really do. Uh, just a few more questions. Just two more uh, before we bid fair, farewell. If you could act act opposite anyone at all in the industry for one project, who would that be, and why? Hmm. 
Oh man, I mean, I, there's so many. That's always such a difficult question to answer. And I always change it depending on my mood because it's a long list. And um, I feel like I would love to work opposite Ryan Reynolds. We went to the same high school together and he just looks like he's fun to work with. Oh. And I just wanna have a nice time and have a good laugh with him. But also I wanna work opposite Kate Blanchett or mm. Uh, Meryl Streep or Emma Thompson or women, you know, that have that wisdom and that can, that you really have to step up your game when you're working with them and you really have to, you know, make sure that you've honed in on your craft and done your best work to meet them at their level. So Hmm. that's... Uh, well, thank goodness I said that quest, quest, question and, and I didn't ask who didn't you want to work with ever <laughs> that would have been straight away that's now, also a long list <laughs> but, but brian but and please, dan being the top of it exactly yeah <laughs> don't work with animals children or brian and dan um i mean i've got to say ryan reynolds though please say he was horrible at high in high school because he's just too 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 nice isn't he i mean was he was he nice at high school can you remember was he you know a not very nice or was he nice well he was he had graduated when i first came in so i remember we were running around in pe and we had to wear you know white shirts and blue shorts and all looked very clunky because you know you're 13 years old and, and you're running there with all the girls around the field and then there he was gracefully throwing a football with his friends and all of the girls were just like <laughs> you know, totally distracted in that moment. But um, I never met him in high school, but he used to be around the school, like in the football field and stuff like that. And now he's a Canadian national treasure, uh, apparently. Yeah, apparent, he app is. You know, which is, which is great because people forget how many great actors are actually from Canada. You know, you've got Kiefer Sutherland. You've got yourself, of course. Uh, you've got um, Michael J. Fox. Um you know, so many great actors are from from the wonderful country of of Canada. Um, so while we all enjoy season two of Shawsy, uh, what's next for you? Is it a case of you're enjoying the show while it's com 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 coming out and having a break, or are you working on other things at the moment? Always working on other things. Always, always, you know, keeping that ball in the air. Um, working on scripts with friends. Working on. Uh, you know, working on comedy, working on learning how to direct and working on just kind of expanding the storytelling skills, you know, that I've gathered so far and taking it to the next level. So um, lots of things I'm working on and we'll see. Well, hopefully next oh. time we chat, we can talk about those. Excellent. We, Tasha, you've been a great guest. It's been wonderful to have you on i'm absolutely loving shawzy can't wait to see the rest and i can't wait to see which slot you get with uh for season two <laughs> my guess is i it don't was a mild know suggestion <laughs> i mean could it be terry ryan could it be you know ryan mcdonald who knows so we need to have a prediction done and we need to put it out 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 there so if anyone's uh, watching that wants to comment please please do uh, but there isn't there isn't a live stream next week or the week after because i'm going away with the wife next week and dan is going away as well so join us back on the 25th of october where we're going to have a spooky halloween edition uh talking about the enfield haunting uh which is a new documentary series that's coming out on apple tv i don't know if you know are you are you a believer in spirits and ghosts and and and, and stuff like, 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 like oh, that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're around us all the time. They're with some of the furniture that I have from set. You know, they're just <laughs> guarding it from me. <laughs> right, look at yourself. Don't go anywhere. I'm going to end the stream uh, and we're going to say our goodbyes after. I just need to press the right button. I'm terrible at this. Here we go. <laughs>